The velvet ant is known to have one of the most painful stings in the world. But how often is this agonizing defense mechanism actually employed? Today, I'm going to get up close and personal with one of these crazy insects and hold it in my bare hand to see if the velvet ant is dangerous to people. My name is Spencer and welcome to Can I Catch It? Today, we're looking for one of the most painful stingers in the world. That's right, we're going after the velvet ant. As it scuttles along the ground, the velvet ant can be easily mistaken for some of the large red carpenter ants that call this area home. But make no mistake, get on this insect's bad side and you'll be in a world of pain. The sting of the velvet ant ranks two on the Schmidt pain scale, described as a stabbing pain similar to that of a knife or even shrapnel. And it was once thought that a single velvet ant could pack a powerful enough punch to kill a cow, hence their nickname, the cow killer. In recent years, the internet has sensationalized the sting of this insect, which makes me curious. How dangerous are these insects to people? And if left alone and not threatened, are they likely to sting unprompted? These wingless wasps like to inhabit areas with sandy soil, which means out here in central North Carolina, you can find a velvet ant just about anywhere. However, my search brings me out to where my backyard meets the road. With less leaf litter cover and more open space, it is much easier to spot these insects as they roam around the ground. The velvet ant is a parasitic wasp, which specifically targets the eggs of other insects. Out here by the road, populations of grasshoppers lay their eggs in the loose, sandy soil. Perfect targets for these female velvet ants that patrol the ground. Spotting one of these insects is going to be incredibly easy. All of the species we have here in central North Carolina are bright orange. This is a form of aposomatic coloration, or warning colors, that advertises to potential predators that this wasp has an incredibly painful sting. While seeing one will be fairly easy, catching it is a whole other ball game. These wasps are incredibly swift as they scuttle along the ground. So the real challenge will be cornering one of these insects and getting it into some form of containment without sustaining a sting. Here we go, here we go. Velvet ant. This is actually a fairly rare species. This is an eyed velvet ant. I thought it was one of those red ants that we've been seeing, but no, this is definitely a decent size. Look at this compared to my hand. Decent sized velvet ant. I'm gonna have to go grab my jar really quick. Hopefully it'll still be out here. Oh man, I never see these guys. Look at those amazing abdomen spots. Yeah, let's grab the jar. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a really delicate procedure here because if I get stung, I'm gonna be in a world of hurt. All right, all right, all right, it's still out here, it's still out. Oh my gosh. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Okay, it's taking refuge under the leaf. This is perfect, this is perfect. Oh man, all right, so I got the jar, I took the lid off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like, cover her up with the jar and then kind of scoot it around until she climbs with the wall and then get the lid on her. So just go ahead. One, two, three. Oh, she's on the, oh, she was on the leaf. There she is. Okay. Boom. Oh shoot. Don't, don't crush. Okay. Come on, climb the jar. You can do it. All I need is to be on the jar just long enough. This would be almost, almost, almost. Yes! Yes, we got the velvet ant. What I've got right here is a velvet ant, an insect known to have one of the most painful stings in the world. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this animal in my bare hand to see if they're dangerous. Here we go. It's time for the moment of truth. I'm incredibly nervous, hands shaking, as I coax this ant out of the jar. I had seen people handle these creatures before, but I didn't know how this individual was going to react. As the velvet ant took its first steps onto my palm, I'm bracing myself for the searing pain of a cow killer sting. A sting which never came. This Eastern-eyed velvet ant, 
which is actually a rare species here in North Carolina, decided not to sting, but out of curiosity, just roamed over the surface of my skin. And let me tell you, the sensation of this animal walking on me was perhaps one of the strangest ones that I've had on this channel. Its feet are oddly pokey, and it feels like little tiny needles are poking in and out of my skin as the animal moves. This definitely adds to my nerves, because combined with that little pokey feeling and the occasional pulse that the animal does with its abdomen, all I can do is sit and anticipate the horrendous pain that I would be in if this animal decided to sting. I'm doing everything I can to keep this animal under control while also not making any sudden moves. If I keep this encounter stress-free, I stand a better chance of coming out of this unscathed. But sure enough, my nerves were all for nothing. I can feel myself gradually getting more and more comfortable holding this animal, because the more that she gets to feel that I mean her no harm, the less erratic and stressed out her movements seem to be. She even became so content that she stopped to clean herself while resting on my hand. This is absolutely incredible. And while I don't recommend you go and try this at home, because stings do happen, I think my verdict is that the Velvet Ant is not actually dangerous. It's actually kind of remarkable how venomous animals and animals that have painful bites and stings are actually relatively reluctant to use their prime defense mechanisms. It takes energy and resources for these animals to produce the venom and to actually engage in biting and stinging. So they're only really going to use it against prey items and against actual threats. Since I am in no way harming this animal and I'm not putting any pressure on its body, this velvet ant does not see me as a threat. In fact, during this presentation, she actually jumped off my arm and into the grass several times, and I was able to pick her up and keep her walking around my skin with no incident. I don't know about you, but I think it's fair to say that the velvet ant is definitely not a threat. All right, she was nice and cooperative for us, but I got her back in her jar. Let's go ahead and release her back on the side of the road here so she can go back about her business hunting for insect eggs in the sand. See you around, Velvet Ant. See you later. What an absolutely incredible encounter. I can say for one, that free handling of Velvet Ant has helped me face some of my fears with handling potentially dangerous animals. And now I'm actually looking forward to handling the weird creatures that you'll recommend next. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learn something about the Velvet Ant as well. If you like Can I Catch It? Check out the link on your screen. I hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.